I'm Barbara Groshevi, and you are watching Goddess TV. Okay, well, my name is Cheve. People call me Chevy, Barbara Groshevi, Barbara. I am a barber stylist. Um, I did cosmetology when I was in high school. I decided that it wasn't for me, and later on, I took up barbering. So now I'm able to do more than just cut hair. I can style, I can color, I can braid. So that's why I call myself a barber stylist. Um, that's so your Instagram dates back to May, yet you've been cutting for like 10 years, right? I've been cutting for 10 years. I didn't start cutting until um, barber school. Oh. So I've been doing hair for about 10 years. So I started my Instagram over so that way I could have a more of a professional look that didn't date back to stuff that didn't pertain to barbering. Oh, okay. So that's cool. What inspired you to cut hair? Really my own styles. So the lack of the lack of barbers and stylists out there to create the type of styles that I wanted for myself. Um, some people didn't really think that the hairstyles were, you know, they may thought it was weird or I could go to a stylist and she was great at styling and coloring hair, but she couldn't give me the cut of a barber. Or I could go to a barber and he was great at cutting hair, but he would like cut too much of my hair off for my stylist or I would have like more of a boyish type of look. So I'm like, where's well, nobody that combines both of them? So that's what made me go to barber school and decided to do Oh, okay. That's dope. Um, with it being such a masculine field, does that intimidate you or has it ever discouraged you in any way? It um it intimidated me in barber school a little bit. Guys, so if if somebody comes in and they're new and they know nobody they're naturally going to gravitate towards a man to cut their hair. So if they see me, they often say, oh, you cut hair or you do hair? And I'm like, okay, I cut hair. Right. And it's like, oh, well, do you cut men's hair? And it's like, yes, I cut men's hair. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. So um, the guys would just naturally have customers or clients, I should say, gravitate towards them. And it was like I had to work double time. And then not to mention, women, we don't really know many men because we go do what women do all day and men do what men do all day. So you got men that are hooping, they're playing basketball with these guys, they're on teams with them, they're doing all type of stuff. So they naturally had a clientele around them. Like I really had to work hard and prove myself to get men clients. So I would often yell on the floor, like, y'all gonna let me cut your hair. And so sometimes they would, it's natural to ask the girls in barber school for facials. And I hated it. I love doing facials, but I hated it because it's like, oh, I'm gonna get my hair cut, but I'm gonna get with a facial. Right, and back of the yeah. mouth. So it was like, no, you're gonna get a haircut or you're not getting a facial. Like, yeah, you know true. I mean? It's like, it's a package deal yeah, type so. thing. That's dope. So what inspired you to just start building your brand around being a barber? Is it just like... I never really looked at it as me building a brand okay. until recently. I mean, I always wanted to do the cool name or whatever, but I was more so focused on what was going to get me clients. Okay. So it, it really just started me like um, naturally thinking like, okay, well, what do people like on my page? Or what do people like about me? Or, you know? Right. So that's really more so how that started but then when I saw how many people paid attention to me and how many people that I kind of influenced I'm like well maybe I should take it more serious and make it more of a brand okay that's dope so uh this is a little off topic there what do you feel is the most underrated topic now in 2018 the month of August the most underrated topic in your opinion it could be anything like um underrated topic or underrated issue issue it could be either one I think the issue with the women coming out about sexual harassment okay. is like, it's almost a joke. Even me, naturally, at first, I was like, oh, you know, when it was Bill Cosby, it was like, oh, whatever. Like, they just want to, you know, tear him down. Right. Then, like, I noticed with a lot of other industries and, like, the actresses are coming out and all type of fields. And I'm like, well, 
I know this from what I go through in the industry. Like, maybe these women are not lying. You know what I right. mean? Like, so it's like they're getting reprimanded, but like, people aren't really paying attention to it or, you know, taking right. it too serious. Right. And I feel like it should be a little more attention to that because a lot of women are uncomfortable in the field that they're in, but it's nobody that cares because the majority of men do most of it. So. So, um, you posted a video about already being famous. It was a little funny little video. Um, is that your end goal, ultimately, to get It famous? wasn't so more of the famous that I should say, because it's not fame that I'm going after. Okay. I feel like um, being able to influence people is more important than fame and money, because if you can... Um, influence somebody to do the things that you want them to do or make them feel like the things that you do are cool, mm -hmm. those things will naturally gravitate towards you. Yeah. So I just feel like I already have that. I feel like a lot of people pay attention to me and a lot of people do, I, I don't want to say mimic, it kind of sounds sound kind of arrogant, but a lot of people do gravitate to the things that I put out there, but I don't really get a lot of recognition for it. And I feel like I will eventually. So that's what that was. It was just funny. Okay, so is recognition important for you, or is it just like, you know, give me that credit where it's due? Credit where it's due. It's not so much as a, I just feel like anything that I do, if I get it from somebody, or like I feel like somebody is dope, I don't hesitate to say it, you know what I mean? Right, right, so right. So that's what I mean by that. Okay. Um, you've worked with Invictus around prom season. Is charity events something that you do often? Yeah, so... This isn't like a job to me. Like I don't really look for like how much money can I get today. Right. It's more so like um, how can I make somebody like like their hair, like their real hair, really is what I should say. Like to feel like okay, I don't need I don't need a soul wig. Right. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like my hair is dope. You know what I mean? So when I can help somebody feel better about how they feel, so that's really more of what I get out of. So when I go to those type of things, they usually have fun or. They haven't had a haircut in two months, so when I give them a haircut and like I, the video on there was them like, oh no ways, you know what I'm saying? All right. Like that's <laughs> it's just it's fun to me. Like I forget that I'm even doing the job. So me doing that, and especially for kids. So some kids don't have people to take them to get a haircut or to tell them about, you know, to help them feel good or to help them feel like who they see on TV or Instagram. Right. So I just enjoy helping the kids. That's dope. So is there anybody that you would like to collab with? now or in the future um so that you can see yourself collaborating with or as far as hair H hair or anything <laughs> else you have going on like locally i ain't really want to think of <laughs> It doesn't have to be local it could be anything it can be a big name for all i care it's just and what do you who do you see yourself working with now or in the future That is so crazy. And on any platform, it can be. Any platform, mm -hmm. right? Could that be? It's like I wanna. Kanye. That's just an okay. ultimate goal, and it's not. It's not so far as cutting his hair. I would. I like to creative direct things. Okay. So it would be more so that would be the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate goal. That's dope. That's what's up. So you seem to be one who thinks consciously or whom get it for a lack of better words. Um, do you feel it's your job to make sure the culture gets it as well, like uh, each one teach one type of situation? Uh, I feel like the, for culture, you mean like black culture? Yeah. Like each one teach one. Each one teach one. We do have to teach each other. See, I'm torn between that because I feel like people depend on people to teach them something or to lead the way. Mm -hmm. So I feel like I, I don't have a problem helping somebody who I feel like genuinely can help themselves. Like, I, I'm not for helping people that don't help themselves. So like, I'm not naturally that person where you can be up under my comments and be like, oh, what app you use? I find that offensive and people think that it's like oh you're supposed to help you know what I mean like I feel like if I took my time and I researched apps and I wasted my money on some apps and you know what I mean and I and I'm taking help from you okay yeah. 
So you recently posted some photos with definitions attached to them. Mm -hmm. How would you elaborate the purpose or the message of those photos? Like, what were you trying to get out there with those? Well, um, funny story about it, because everything that happens to on my page and by me is accident. Okay. So I had I was gonna just build my portfolio, like just personal pictures. And I booked the session, and I was gonna have a model, which is why I posted me and a few models. Mm -hmm. I mean, I need a model. And we were just gonna do our hair, and we were gonna take hair shots. It had nothing to do with me or how I looked. And um, well, she ended up not showing up, but I didn't wanna play him and waste his time. So I still was like, well, I'm gonna just put some makeup on and go take some pictures. So, so as I took the pictures, he like gave, it was like every emotion. Like I noticed, I'm like, well, that's cool. Like it really got all of my emotions. And then, I'm like, well, I've, I've recently done a lot of self-searching and, like, isolation so that my mind could be prepared to, you know, go as far as I can because school was a lot and being in the first year was a lot. So um, I'm like, well, this kind of shows all my emotions that, like, led up to me being good now. I'm good now. Right. <laughs> so, like, so those those feelings and those emotions, which was the definitions, were just how I was feeling from the beginning of it. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, I put, I think I put dang, mm -hmm. maybe was the first one. Like, you know, you starting stuff, you fully yourself, you feel like you can do whatever, you're invincible. Right. You know what I mean? It's all about you. Right. And like those other definitions led up until how my emotions changed and how I started to view things differently. And, and that's why the last one was ready. And that's what I was getting to. So yeah. when you stated that you were ready, you were just, you said it as if you got something big coming up. Is it something <laughs> up your sleeve? Can you give us a little? Um, yeah, it something? is something big that I do plan on doing next year. I don't really want to tell you guys what it is. <laughs> it is industry related, but it's not so much focusing on just barbering or just the barbering professionals. like. It's creative, so okay. it's gonna it's something that's gonna um, mix all of the things that I like in my life. Okay. Um, as far as new things, creative things, music, you know, stuff like that. Right. Okay, that's dope. So, for someone just starting out in the barber world, what would be your greatest piece of advice? Um. Let stuff rub off your shoulders. Don't let it get to you. Let it go in one ear and out the other. I would say keep your, um, what do they call those, blinders? Mm -hmm. Keep those on and constantly talk to yourself. Constantly talk to yourself, write down how you feel, repeat how you feel, um, and make sure you have at least maybe one or two people who you can tell everything to, because I feel like that helps to play off of somebody help you um, figure out how you feel and uh, I would say you gotta find something that gives you peace where you don't where it, 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 it takes away the stress and everything I would say it's, it's very big to make sure you have something that can take you away from your life or even if it's just like five or ten minutes a day so speaking of advice um, views from a chick posted it's really men out here who will give you the world without you even having to ask and y'all be settling for asking niggas what are we after talking for three years how would you apply that settling concept to your business life it's <laughs> not a business page <laughs> well um, the, prof the professional side of what you do rather so hard to make that ratchet statement. <laughs> like, like, you have to try, like just a little bit, just a little bit. As far as not settling in your throat, don't take no for an answer. A lot of people like to tell me, "Oh, that's crazy. I don't do that," or "That's unprofessional," or you know. And I'm right. like, so like, I'm gonna do like, right. like, I'm gonna do it anyway because I just want to see, and I'm thinking about it all day, so I'm gonna do it anyway. Like, right. I don't care what you think. And then people end up liking it. So I would say don't settle for no. Okay. No, don't settle for no. I have 99 problems, but I'm avoiding them all. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Okay. So what are you doing differently to offset your procrastination? 
It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know because it's not there yet. It's not something that I've mastered yet. Okay. But one thing that has helped me with procrastination is if people ask me stuff last minute, I say yes. Okay. Just so it's like it makes me get up. So I don't say, oh, I need more time. But that just okay. helps my procrastination. So whenever anybody asks me anything, I'll just say yes. Okay. Just say yes. So do you, is there any time that you would just be like, no, hell no, nah, I'm not doing that. Like, I mean, if it's something would make that's you like, wrong, wrong, you know what I mean? Or something that have me out of character. But if it's not, then no, I'll say yes. Then you know, I got you. Um, God may not be done with you yet, but I am. What type of people do you avoid to protect your energy and your business? People that, um, people that think differently of me than what I try. I'm not gonna say what I try to portray myself, what I am. So mm -hmm. um, it, it's a it's a big it's a big misconception out here about my attitude, um, about me being mean or me being unapproachable. And people that like to feed into that or like to, like some people will like to introduce me as that, like, oh, she's not as mean as she look, or you know, stuff like that. Right. I don't like those people. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't like those people. Okay. Let people judge me off of how they want to judge me and my interactions with those people. Okay. Or people that speak negatively, even if it's not about me. Like, if everything right. just negative to them, like, if, you know, like, stuff happens to people. So, if stuff happens to you, you can't get over it and you harboring on it and you making everybody else's day bad with your bad yeah. attitude. Right. <laughs> like, like, no, I don't like those people around me. <laughs> Gotcha. Um, so, wait, before I even go into this, what are fibers? Fibers are fake. I guess they are like little fake hairs that you can take and you can fill in. Most people use it like for the liner. Okay. And you can fill it in for people that are thin and little over. Okay, so I've seen that you posted about how men have opinions about uh, women's wigs and unit mm -hmm. pieces. So, how do you feel about fibers and men units? <laughs> <laughs> I never really voiced my opinion too much about it because it's a big, huge debate in the bar world. Okay. So, me personally, being a woman, I don't like them. And me being, talking to other women, mm -hmm. they don't like them. <laughs> so... I'll just say it, guys. We just don't like it. <laughs> like, how y'all don't like our makeup, and y'all don't like our weave, and y'all tell us we don't need it. You don't need it. Right. We don't like you it. Don't need it. And then washes off and it. So, like, <laughs> like, it's coming off anyways. So, um, how did Barbara Girl Chevy get to where she is currently? Like, is there something specific that happened that made you get to the point you are today? As far, as far as mindset, mindset, or my mind, or mindset, mindset. Why? As far as what you're, everything you're doing, that the attitude of development. I mean, the development of the attitude. I have to work for what I want, um, and building this platform and everything. Stuff happening. <laughs> Just, I always had a plan on how I was going to go and it never, I don't care what I plan, I can plan the next 10 minutes, it's not going to happen, like, it just never happens, so I always have to keep going, um, um, me being forced to be in positions that I wasn't, I didn't really want, I wasn't favorable of, made me have a different drive, um, it made me more so, I'm doing it by myself, like, I don't need, I'm not going to look for you, I don't need you, I don't need you to help me. Um, that's more so of how I got here, and it, it's just really just experience me dealing with stuff and realizing who I can't be with, or I can't work with, or where I can't work at, or you know, mm -hmm. it's just it's really just a it's just life. It's nothing specific that got me here at all. <laughs> <laughs> like it's just life and obstacles. Yeah. Um, and we're gonna get ready to wrap it up, but. If your last words were your next words, what would they be? So hungry. <laughs> <laughs> like, just give me a burger. That's too deep. Like, like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I could say, just whenever you think it's too hard, just say, who cares? And do what you want to do. 
So that would be my last word, just to always do what you want to do and not care about what anybody or any what anybody has to say, any rules, anything. Just do what you want to do if it's legal. You said it is legal. Leave the illegal things alone. And is there anything you would like to close out on or, you know, tell Goddess TV where to reach you or anything like that? Well, you can reach me at Barbara Girl Shaggy. Um, personally, to see how I am personally, you could have done views from a chick. I am located at Artist Shaggy Barbershop on 200th Street, right next to Dairy Queens. And my team is nominated for Barber Team of the Year. <laughs> we will be at the blog. What the shit? <laughs> Follow your Instagram and then you'll find right. out where that will be. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll be at the the Stylist Awards on September 16th. And you will be able to vote for us soon, so vote for us.